Mauricio Suleiman explains those 3% fees. Let's talk. Push the weight in the fix. Flex the lavish one in the six. Fit the runner boy, you nigga, no question. You would run a motherfucker high stepping. Hey, you never had a big enough weapon. Hey, motherfucker, never learn your lesson. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Boof. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Boof. I mean, they walk a drink, blood things out. Full moon, motherfucker, change like a whole brother. I'm just a nigga from the hood trying to stack a little cheddar for the money. Drew Titan Bronze on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. Let's do this. Boxing scene. Link will be in the description. Suleiman explains why the WBC charges 3% fees to titleists. He says everything goes back to boxing. Well, let's, 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 let's look at this. Suleiman is willing to send skeptics of his organization an accounting of its finances. I've kind of been curious about this. Not kind of. I've definitely been curious. Or the sanctioning bodies. Uh, I want to know. <coughs> excuse me. I want to know where the money goes. I want to know what, what it's used for. Okay. The head of uh, the Mexico City-based World Boxing Council, one of four major sanctioning bodies, was recently prompt to defend. See? Language is everything. To defend how his company conducts his business. WBC was started by Suleiman's father, Jose, in 1963. Specifically, Suleiman has, uh, he was asked to consider remarks made by former two division titleist and Hall of Fame fighter Andre Ward in an interview with uh, Kate Abdo earlier this year, where Ward expressed his dissatisfaction, in, his dissatisfaction with uh, sanctioning bodies and requested, well, I'm sorry, he, he questioned the fees that they routinely levy on their belt holders. There's an article about that. And there's a link in this article going back to that article where, I, where Andre Ward spoke on it. You know, and I agree because I wanted to know what's going on. Uh, the WBC, for example, charges 3% anytime one of its uh, champions gets in the ring. Suleiman cited a slew of reasons why the WBC charged 3% from overhead expenses to humanitarian work, to research, to development of women's boxing, etc. Well, women's boxing. Um, this is like a little bit of a sidebar. You know, I know women's boxing should be bigger, and I agree. But, man, is this a cheap shot? Women's boxing isn't as big because it's not supported by women. You know, the women, the I don't need no man woman. It could be bigger if y'all participated in it by supporting it with your money, with your eyesight. Same thing with the WNBA. There's no female NFL, but they, like, well, I'm sorry, it's called the Lingerie League, I think. That's only for a certain kind of woman, but I digress. <laughs> that's just a little side rant for me. Maybe that's for my other channel, but you know, whatever. He says, uh, well, that's how it uh, was originally structured 60 years ago. So I should ask, 60 years ago, um, the, the people who came up with it, Suleiman said jokingly on a DAZN boxing show, maybe we should charge 5 or 10%. He says, uh, what we do, everything goes back to boxing. Now, remember he says that, right? He says, from amateur boxing, we do a lot of things in amateurs. Do you really? <laughs> Do a lot of things for amateurs i bet you do uh, we do a lot of things for professional boxing in 175 countries i bet you do and we take care of our own i bet you do i wonder what he means by that we protect our own i'm sorry we could take we take care of our own let me not misquote him it's right hand writing and we take care of our own who's our own we take care of the elderly fighters that are going through difficult times really they have no more money. They either spent it all or make very little. But everyone in the industry can access the WBC humanitarian aid. You know, I'm going to do more research on the WBC humanitarian aid. Before I rip them, let me see what they actually do. But remember this quote, y'all. He says, we take care of elderly fighters going through. Y'all follow me? Y'all seen all kinds of fighters that I've had on here. That beg to differ. Now, whether they held a WBC title or not at some point in their career, I have to go research that. But let, I'll research that some more. As I said, we have so many committees. 
We are funding research for women's boxing. Wow. And we are all over the place with everything. And that costs money. We have six employees in Mexico. Uh, we have we have to pay rent. We have to pay administration. We have committees and, <laughs> and the research. <laughs> okay, not including the money that you've been dealing with uh, in reference to Danny Kennehan, but you know, I digress. You know, let's not forget what he said about Danny Kennehan. I'm judging off of what he's done now. I'm not Interpol, I'm not the police. Remember he said that? America lost some sanctions on his ass, $5 million bounty on his head, and he hasn't spoken on that. But maybe let's get through the article. Let's see if he addresses that at any time. Suleiman added that he will he would be more than willing to send proof to those who harbor suspicion about the WBC's financial dealings. Wow. Suleiman listed a few more important initiatives. He says that the WBC has spearheaded in boxing, such as its efforts in anti-doping protocol. Really? Your boy Tyson Fury got injections in this elbow before Wilder Fury 3. We didn't find out about that until the night of or the day of. You also allowed this guy, although he had COVID, get on a guy or, or allegedly had COVID, get on a plane and fly all the way across the water to see his sick child. They let him in the hospital after saying he had had COVID and then fly back. He had more energy than a little bit in that third fight, did he not? Anti-doping indeed. All right, um, but let's read on. Anyone that wants to see what we do with the money, they are welcome to see and we will send them all proof. The WBC is the one that brought, what, fights from 15 rounds to 12 rounds, implemented the day of the weigh-in. Uh, uh, the four ropes in the ring, they, they're responsible for four ropes in the ring, uh, the changes uh, uh, to the gloves and anti-doping. So he's taking credit for all of those changes. 15 rounds or 12 rounds, that's after a death in the ring. You know, deaths in the ring can happen at any, whatever, whatever. I ain't gonna go there, man. whatever. He says, uh, we spend a lot of money on anti-doping and the clean boxing program. Really? How much money? Oh, wow, okay. 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 Let me just finish this up. He says, we spend a lot of money on anti-doping in the clean boxing program. We have the weight management program. We have countless amounts of social responsibility programs, and that's where the money goes. It is done on behalf of every single fighter who ever fought for the WBC. Suleiman understands that some critics will never be satisfied with the sanctioning bodies. So as long as they are reaping a financial benefit. Well, you're absolutely right about that. I'm one of them. Whenever there's money involved, an organization is going to be bad, Suleiman said. But we just live with it. I can only speak for the WBC. Well, speak on a goddamn franchise stat. Speak on that. Now, I understand at some point, you know, things change. But at some point, I heard that, and, you know, I may have misheard. No one's paying sanctioning fees on the, on the franchise status. It's a special status giving to somebody you know what i'm saying you have to request it it has to be reviewed but i guess by those six people those six employees that he said he had in mexico right what do they say we have six employees in mexico city six so is that the board meeting hey this guy wants a franchise status let's vote on it let me see he's the complexion for the protection okay he sells seats uh but okay let's give it to him so we're going to award him this status so he can go up and down and wait, north, south, east, west, and wait. And he'll never lose that status. And they made it into a belt, so it's visual. And it's not transferable. Oh, wait a minute. Tiafima Lopez is fighting Vasily Lomachenko for it. He requested it. Yeah, good enough. So he won it. Technically, Vasily Lomachenko is supposed to still be a franchise champion. But the rules changed right in front of us. See, I didn't forget any of that. I didn't forget any of that, Mauricio. So, so all of these, all of these things you're saying, yeah, it's fluff to me. I don't believe you. I don't believe you, man. As many times you told us you'll kiss my ass, sugar. 
You know what I'm saying? Alejandro Jimenez. Remember that? You letting Tyson Fury fly all over the place? And then you want to talk about anti-doping? When we said, yo, look into this guy, you said, kiss my ass. Y'all just trying to ruin the night of boxing. Everything that you're talking about is impossible. You talking about six employees and we got to pay rent? I don't care about any of that. I agree with Andre Ward. I agree 100%. You're funding research for women's boxing. Funding research? What are you researching? Why they don't sell as many seats as men? I have your answer because not a lot of women support women's boxing. Just like not a lot of women support the WNBA. But they'll turn around and say that that's men's fault. That's your research right there. I just solved your problem. Get more women to attend your events. There, problem solved. What are you researching? Y'all can accept this fluff if y'all want to. But this is Mauricio Suleiman talking about. Every time I turn around, look at the picture, man. Every time I turn around, he's inventing a belt. Look at that belt. What is that? The Union Jack douchebag belt. That costs money to make. Somebody had to get paid to make that. So you mean to tell me the 3% sanction fees that is coming from the fighters or whatever, whatever he's saying goes into that. Somebody had to get paid for that to make that belt. That costs money. Wondering if you, to, to win that belt, you have, to, you have to pay for it. No one made it for free. 175 countries you're working with. We do a lot of things in professional boxing for, for, for in professional boxing in 175 countries. How many belts do these guys have? Did y'all know that uh, um, I think Robert Helen is, is a regular champion? Excuse me, what the hell is that? We know what a franchise is. Doesn't make sense. But what's a regular champion? I mean, really, speak English, man. You speak English. Do what's right. What research do you need? That in reference to La Barbi and uh, 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 what was that? What was that? The Japanese fighter's name, Togo. The Barbi got jerked. But when those when the uh, news came out about Togo's gloves, they were on your desk. That research cost money. But when we told you about those gloves with Fury. And I told you that the gloves were in Sugar Hill's house. Where was your research there? There were no bitches involved, so no research. Because we were just trying to ruin a night of boxing. You see, here's the bottom line, y'all. I don't care what he's willing to explain about some sanction fees that he uh, 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 charges these fighters to carry that green belt. That green belt has been tarnished. tarnished. He undermined his own belt. When he invented a franchise status, he undermined the integrity of the WBC based off his behavior, inventing statuses, inventing belts every five minutes, the Black Lives Matter belt. And how you treated Deontay Wilder, 10 title defenses, and you didn't even have the common courtesy to investigate what he said. And then icing on the cake. Come to find out you was working with Daniel Kennehan and was unapologetic about it. At one point, you was unapologetic about it. So at this point, I don't care what you're willing to prove. I don't care. I don't trust you, dude. Your dad's rolling in his grave. I don't trust you. And I have I can say that because I've spoken to you. I don't trust you. Mr. Franchise Status indeed. You do what's best for business, like the rest of these people do. You see value in guys like Tyson Fury. 
knowing that they have zero character. You see value in Canelo Alvarez, which is why he told you, kiss my ass. I'll fight Golovkin when I want to. And you still ran back and sniffed his balls and, and gave him a belt again. You gave him a franchise status. You still did that and fucked off the Charlo fight. You did that. You gave uh, uh, Vasily Lomachenko franchise status. I don't care what you explain about these fees and what you charge these fighters. You have no credibility with me. Don't care. Y'all take what y'all want from this. This article don't mean dick to me. Because he's a dick. Bronx on deck. Move!